fans welcome to another episode of after the dogs raw for season 2017 this is episode 9 and it is going to be a really big episode let's get stuck into having a look at the episode agenda i'm going to start the show with an overview of our round one encounter against collingwood at the mcg really looking forward to wrapping up this game of course also coming up is my round one votes for the after the dogs raw best and fairest of Award. Of course, uh, I did this uh, last year and I'm going to be doing it again this year. It's where I pick uh, the 3 2 1 votes uh, from our Western Bulldog players for each game. I'm then going to uh, have a look at the ladder. We're going to have a look at where we stand on the AFL ladder after round one. Not that it really matters too much, but uh, it is always interesting to have a look where things are at after round round one and each round in fact and then after that we're going to preview the big one it's the grand final replay between the swans looking forward to that game looking forward to previewing that in the later stages of the episode and then finally to wrap up episode nine of after the dogs roar it is the five fan questions the fan favorite segment which took a week off last week but it's back this week for questions after our round one match, which we're going to overview right now. So, of course, Friday night we took on Collingwood in our opening game of season 2017. This was built up to be an absolute blockbuster, and it did turn out that way. Our doggy side, well, they kicked the first four goals of the game. Looked like they were going to take it away from the Pies early on and, in fact, uh, dominate the match throughout the game. That didn't uh, work out though, in fact, uh, and in fact that wasn't the case. Uh, the Pies were able to work their way back into it in the second quarter after a, uh, a pretty dominant display by the Dogs in the first quarter. It's fair to say that the Dogs did leave, lead at half time, 9-1 to the Pies, 7-9, so it was a narrow lead. Uh, and uh, to the Pies' credit, they were able to hit the front uh, at the start of the third quarter, so things got very interesting after the half time break. However, we were able to uh, bite back. Uh, we had uh, we had uh, the uh, three quarter time um, the three quarter time lead. Uh, it was uh, nine eleven to fourteen six. So we held a uh, held a lead at three quarter time, which was uh, very pleasing. And in the end, we were just too strong for Collingwood. Although credit to Collingwood, they did come out and give it a fair shot, but it wasn't enough. We were too strong. The final score, Collingwood 12-14-86, defeated by our mob, the Western Bulldogs, 15-10-100. Uh, let's have a look at the goal kickers. Uh, Lockie Hunter was outstanding early, and uh, he kicked a couple of goals early and, and ended up with three goals at the end of the match. Johannesson, Bond and Pelly, and Pickett kicked, uh, Pickin kicked uh, two each. Uh, then Matthew Boyd, Stringer, Libertore, Cramery, McLean, and Cloak kicked singles. How good was Cloak's goal from uh, around the 50 metre mark? How good was that and how extraordinary was the Collingwood fans? Uh, I'm sure that uh, the Bulldog fans were uh, trying to cheer them out although Collingwood were just uh, putting too much noise uh, in the M MCG until Travis Cloak kicked that goal. It was extraordinary and of course uh, credit to all the players who got around him. Let's have a look at the best players. Uh, Dalhouse, Libertore, Bond and Pelly, Johannesson, Hunter, Murphy and Boyd all got in the best players. Uh, and you'll be happy to know that Travis Varco got one week for that uh, terrible bump on uh, Luke Dalhouse. Pretty uh, pretty rough stuff. You can't do that in the game anymore. We know that. And uh, just over 66,000 attended this match at the MCG. I thought it might have been a bit higher, but uh, you can't complain with that crowd because that's still a very large crowd. 
So of course, congratulations to our uh, Western Bulldogs side, uh, winners in the opening round. We've been uh, winners in the opening round in uh, the last three years now, so we've become quite good at uh, winning in round one. It's fantastic to get off to a great start in season 2017. It's no, about, no doubt about that. On now to my round one uh, votes for the After the Dogs Raw Best and Fairest Award. Of course, uh, this was a thing that I did last year. I also did it with the uh, the women, and we're doing it again for the men. So uh, let's get into it. Uh, starting with my one vote, I've given it to Tom Libertore. Uh, I thought he had a, uh, a pretty... Uh, pretty decent amount of impact in the game it's fair to say that he only got the 16 disposals but he did kick one goal and he did have a lot of influence in the game uh, with uh, and, and that's why he got 115 AFL fantasy points he was uh, everywhere in various stages of the game so he definitely deserves at least one vote that's exactly what he is getting I've given uh, two votes to Lockie Hunter I mentioned before that he was uh, I thought he was quite outstanding in the early parts of the game uh, maybe faded away a little bit in the second half, but he was still there, and uh, that's why he gets the two votes. He got uh, 21 disposals. He kicked three goals, as I mentioned before. Uh, he had a lot of the ball early, as I mentioned. Had a lot of the ball, and, um, yeah, deserving of the two votes. There's no question about that. And then the three votes, I've given it to the Norm Smith medalist of 2016. That is Jason J. Hattison. He gets off to a very good start in season 2017 with the three votes here in the best and fairest. Award he got uh, 30 disposals, uh, which was uh, the most uh, out of any player uh, in the game. In fact, uh, he uh, in fact it was the most out of any Western Bulldogs player because there were a couple of Collingwood players who got more disposals than him. But uh, he was uh, he kicked two goals as well, and he uh, had a very very big impact in the Western Bulldogs round one win. So Jason Johannesson, the three votes. For me, so that is my votes for uh, the After the Dogs Raw Best and Fairest Award. My round one votes. Okay, time now to have a look at where we stand on the 2017 AFL ladder after round one. Of course, it doesn't really matter too much where we stand after the opening round, but it's good to have a look. And uh, you can see there that we are on eighth place, just uh, one spot down from where we finished in 2006. Dean, a uh, very interesting ladder early, by the way. Like, uh, you know, I wouldn't have predicted the Giants to be down the bottom uh, after round one, and, uh, and, and well, I wouldn't, pre wouldn't have predicted the Swans to get off to a, uh, a poor start in uh, 2017 as well. So uh, some very interesting results in round one. Uh, it must be said, of course, you can go and uh, see my uh, wrap-up of all the other games on the Ultimate AFL wrap-up show here on this channel. But yeah, we're currently 8th on the ladder, of course, a, uh, a big game between the Swans. It's going to be 8th uh, and 14th, 8th v 14th uh, on Friday night, so looking forward to that. Okay, time now to get into our Round 2 encounter. It is at Eddie Hat Stadium between our uh, rivals from last year, it's fair to say that, because we played in the grand final against them and beat them. It's the Sydney Swans. Uh, this game on Friday night, Friday the 31st of March, starting at 7.50pm, and you can watch all the action on 7 and also Fox footy. Uh, really looking forward to this game. Of course, we have won the last three matches against the Swans. Uh, Beveridge has never lost to the Swans under... He's uh, under as him as coach so far of, of the dogs, so uh, that is uh, quite a good little uh, fact to take into the game. However, there is some facts that are in favour of the Swans, so uh, they actually have a good history uh, against us uh, in terms of, of Eddie Had Stadium, playing at Eddie Had Stadium, because uh, the last three times we've played against them at Eddie Had Stadium, they have won. In fact, it's interesting to note uh, the Swans have won their last 10 at the venue and they haven't been defeated at Eddie Had Stadium since 2012. So a lot of good facts uh, in favour of the Swans. There's no question about that. But then what about... Uh, what about uh, the last couple of years uh, when we've played the Swans at, at the SCG? Uh, there has been people who, in fact, the betting agencies and other people have been tipping against us to not win. Of course, last year was a prime example of that after we lost to the Cats. So 
Uh, no matter what the facts are, we have a very good side. Of course, there there is some improvements we can uh, we can take out of the uh, the Collingwood game to to take into this game. There's no question about that. But I thought we played uh, quite okay on at the MCG on Friday night. We're very capable of winning this game. It's going to be interesting to see the changes to the squad if there is any. Of course, Dale Morris. We know. I forgot to mention earlier that he uh, has suffered a broken leg, so he will be out. It'll be interesting to see who replaces him, and uh, of course uh, also. Um, uh, if any of the other players come out as well. So uh, looking forward to this game. Friday night, of course, it's the unfurling of our uh, our flag as well. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a sold-out crowd at Eddie Hatt Stadium. Can not wait to view this game. Okay, time now for the fan favourite segment. This is the five fan questions. This is where I pick the best five questions asked by you, the viewers, and answer them exclusively on this show. Let's start with the first question from Ryan. He asks, has Cramery lost his spot in the best 22, especially with Dixon to come back in? It's a very hard question, this one. Very tough question to answer. I'm not really sure which way to go about this because I thought Cramery wasn't too bad in round one against Collingwood. Uh, he got one goal. He got uh, a little bit of the ball and he did have uh, some sort of impact uh, in stages of the game. So, I'm not sure. And, and then Dixon, well, we, we saw him last year. He was uh, quite a good player. Uh, he uh, was a premiership player. So, yeah, it's a hard one, this one. I'm not really sure which way to go. I'd love to see Dixon back in, but then again, I, I don't really want Cramery to be squeezed out, but maybe that's might maybe that's what has to happen. Maybe maybe Cramery might, you know, if he's not informed, then maybe, maybe Dixon will have to come in and he might have to go to the VFL. It's a hard one, this one. Of course, Dixon... You'd probably prefer Dixon after Cramery uh, had a year off last year, but then again, Cramery showed some really good signs in the preseason and also against Collingwood. So, hard one, that one. I'm not really sure. I'm, I think I'm going to stay in between the fence with this one. I'm not really sure which way to go at this present time. Sorry about that. Matt Button asks, with players like Clay Smith and Josh Dunkley extremely stiff to miss out on round one, can you see them squeezing into the round two side? If so, for who? Uh, not really certain that they will both get into the round two squad against uh, the City Swans, but uh, I am going to predict that they may squeeze in. Uh, I think there could be a possibility that Josh Dunkley will replace uh, Dale Morris. I think he might do a good job where Dale Morris plays. He he might be, um, you know, he, he might be suited to playing at that position and, uh, and, and, yeah, suited to replacing Dale Morris. So possibly jo Josh Dunkley may come in for the injured Dale Morris. Uh, and Clay Smith, I'd love to see him in the side because he was stiff to, to miss out last week. Just thinking, and, 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 and look, uh, maybe there's a possibility that that, um, that maybe you push someone like Fletcher Roberts out of the side, put Cordy back, and, and then put uh, Clay Smith in the full forward, like I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when I answered your question about the round one side a couple of weeks ago, Matt. But I'm not too certain, to be honest, because... There's not, there's probably not too many players you can squeeze out of the round one squad. Uh, so, so yeah, that's kind of my thinking at the moment. Maybe pushing out Fletcher Roberts, putting Cordy back. There's a bit of a risk there that we won't have enough big men. Uh, and then put uh, Clay Smith up a full forward, considering that uh, Tom Boyd is playing most of his time in the ruck at the moment. And, uh, and you know, Travis Cloak will probably be that back up again, but, but even so... Um, you, you know, I'd like to see him in the for, forward line as well. So that's just my prediction at the moment. I'm, I'm not too, I'm not 100 percent sure on what I just said then, but, but um, I'm going to stick with it at the moment. I think that could possibly work. Jenny asks, who will replace Dale Morris in our team on Friday? Very interesting question. Of course, Dale Morris broke his leg on Friday night against Collingwood, so it was his right leg, so he will be out for a bit of time. Uh, I'm, like I said, Josh Dunkley. I think he will. Um, he will replace Dale Morris. I think. Uh, I think. Yeah, Josh Dunkley probably stiff to miss out last week. Should come in for Dale Morris. That's probably my prediction anyway. Jen Evans asks, who will play on Kennedy? Uh, yeah, he was a very influential player on on uh, Saturday. Considering the Swans did lose, they he actually was. The best player out there for the Swans, there's no question about that. He had 28 disposals, one goal, 118 fantasy points, and, and like I mentioned, probably the best on ground for uh, for, for the Swans. So, um, look, uh, I you know, pro it's probably out of Marcus Bond and Pelling or Luke Dalehouse, I reckon. You could probably, possibly play McRae on him as well. 
maybe Lockie Hunter, but I'm thinking Bond and Pelly Dalhouse, maybe out of them two, uh, would be the way to go for me. So uh, either of those two, I reckon. Bond and Pelly Dalhouse, if you were going to play a, uh, a guy on him, of course, he was very influential, like I said, on Saturday in round one. So uh, we do have to probably watch him a fair bit on Friday night at Eddie Had. Final question comes from Belinda. She asks, Libba's 100 this week, how will he celebrate it? I tell you what, I can't believe it's his 100. For that. He actually feels like, now that he's won a premiership and and and, and, and the, the year that he had last year, actually, he actually feels like a 150 game player, but but he's not because he had a year off and, and, and um, but, but even so, if he, even if he didn't have a year off, he wouldn't be at the 150 mark. But uh, look, I'm sure he'll just go out there and, and, and play a good game. That's what he'll probably want to do and, and, and hopefully get the win. And that's uh, how uh, Tom Libertoy will probably uh, spend uh, and celebrate his, uh, his 100 by going out to Etihad Stadium and winning against uh, the, uh, the City Swans, who we beat in the grand final last year. And that is it for this episode of After the Dogs Raw, episode 9. Of course, don't forget to like, comment and share this video. Subscribe for more episodes of this show. Of course, here there is an episode uploaded every week now, right up until after the Western Bulldogs uh, final game, which, of course, I've mentioned a couple of times. I hope it's the grand final again this year. Thank you very much for clicking on and watching. And uh, until next week, enjoy Friday night's match against the Swans. Let's hope we get another win and be 2-zip after round two. Bye for now.